Good afternoon. May blessings and peace be upon everybody who's going to be watching this. Happy June 19th to my Black African American kings and queens. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm going to share with you guys a testimony. And I'm still alive and I'm grateful to be alive to share with you guys the greatness of God and how God allowed me to still be here to share with you guys my testimony. So on June 19th, 2019, I got robbed at gunpoint in Detroit, Michigan by myself. No family no body no gun just me and god and my faith so i have they flew me out to detroit the video on youtube rain for those of you who don't know i've been doing music since i was eight but so i had released rain they found my instagram page in my description they hit me up on instagram i was on the bus when i received this message then they had called me not my personal phone number but i have a number where you can reach me if you're interested in working with me I have a number where you can reach me so they called my phone while I was on the bus on the way to my job. I was making $44 a day, working from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., making $11 a day. Now, if you're on the bus and you're working a minimum wage job like that and somebody call you telling you that your dreams finally manifested, you're going to go you're going to go leap and you're going to go take faith and you're going to you're going to go take action to you know pursue your career. So they was just, they all like, yo, we seen Rain. Rain is a really hard song. Like that song deserves a lot of recognition and you are an independent artist. You know, you are very overlooked, just gassing me, filling up that void, like not telling me what I wanted to hear, but telling me what I deserve to hear and, and what I've always been hearing. But like, these people, these folks invested money into having an automatic phone system to trick me to think that they were Capitol Records. This is how real this stuff was. And mind you, I was on my way to work telling me, where are you now? You need to get off the bus, you know? I said, I can't quit my job. They were like, what you mean you can't quit your job? You're about to be a multimillionaire. I'm like, well, sir, I was doubting because I didn't know, you know, I had a gut feeling. I had a, something in my spirit was telling me, be careful, you know? But I stick the chance because I didn't want to miss out on the opportunity you know what if that was that, that special opportunity and i just missed out on it because i was scared because i was nervous because what whatever the case may be so i didn't want to be that person and i refused to be another statistic they was just telling me like you know and i'm like they, they had asked me they was like we need you to come with the budget i'm like my sister always told me never to tell nobody how much money you make but I did slip up and out of excitement. I was like, I do have $4,000 saved up, but that is for that is for my first vehicle. They was like, ma'am, why are you tripping about a car? You're about, you, you can have a Lambo in the next 30 days. Boy, was that music to my ears? Yes, indeed. It so after that scenario, I'm thinking to myself, man, this is it. I got to get off this bus. I got to make my way back home. I have to get to this airport. First, I got to contact my sister so she could give me my money. After they had got off the phone, I called her. I was like, yo, this is it. A Capitol Records just contacted me. I have to hurry up. I can't go to work today. I have to hurry up and I have to get to the airport because I'm, my, my dreams are manifesting. I got to go. I had so much excitement, so much anxiety, just so much emotion, period. After getting her off the phone, it took me about an hour to get that girl to send me my money. And she wasn't doubting, but she felt like this wasn't right. So after an hour, she finally sent me my money. She was like, Tayana, if that's what you want to do, if that's what you feel is right, go ahead. And she was just telling me, like, you, you're a hard worker. I'm happy for you. She was just excited for me. We all thought that it was real. At first, she was doubting it, but she came around and she started she started understanding like okay this is what she wants this is what tayana been grinding for so this is real so after getting off the phone with my sis i get off the bus and i cross over to the other street to get back on the bus to go home because she about to send me my money i'm about to go to the airport i'm gonna fly out and i'm gonna i'm about to do what i'm born to do so i'm on the bus and i'm heading back home and the dude calling me, he was like, hey, did you leave? Are you coming? Just making sure that I'm still in route. He was like, we need to get to get you on this plane and we need to get you here with me so I can meet up with you and we could just start working, gassing me up, gassing me up. So I finally reached home. It took me about an hour and 30 minutes to get back home on the bus. I'm finally home. I start packing. I rush in the house. I start packing, grabbing my things. I pack my pack my stuff in my mama's suitcase. God rest her soul. And I just said a little prayer like, God, please comfort me. You know, it's just saying a prayer of grace. That's when my cousin, he, he came, he brought me, he brought me the money, he picked me up. We headed to the airport. He was telling me like, Ty, 
When you get up there, you better call me. When you have a music video, you better call me. Just hyping me up. Congratulations, you've been grinding for so long. I, when I heard so many congratulations, so many people in my family was hitting me up. People that didn't even really support my music like that. But now that I got this opportunity in my hand, everybody was on my dick, no cap. Into the airport, he was like, hey, the dude kept calling me, making sure the dude from the label, he was pretending to be P. He was pretending to be P from Quality Control. And you know, P is the owner of Quality Control. Control. And Quality Control actually have a partnership with Capitol Records. I was so like shit faced because we did our research thinking that this shit was real, that my dreams and my hard work was finally finna manifest and pay off. I'm here, he was glad that you're here. He was like, he booked the ticket and stuff. And then he was like, why you're waiting? I need you to write your biography, you know, write, write who you are, what, why you wanted to do music. And, and I, I wrote verbatim of who I am. I wrote two pages of what I do and what I consist of thinking that this was about to pay off, thinking that this biography was going to be headlined, thinking that this biography was going to be in Wikipedia, man. Y'all don't understand my frustration, my pain. This shit was real. This shit that I had to experience on my own, man, in Detroit, Michigan, by myself. So I, after I write my biography, I was delayed, you know, from West Palm Beach to get to Atlanta. I waited four hours to get to Atlanta. When I get to, finally get to Atlanta, I'm in Atlanta for three more hours. Seven hours wasted. I finally touched down in Detroit at four o'clock in the morning by myself. Dude, done had fell asleep. So he had, I had got taxi to the hotel. So when I finally get to the hotel, dude was standing in the lobby he was like hey meet me i was scared as hell y'all when i tell y'all i was so scared i had to stand up because it, i was so scared like i didn't know what to expect you know i'm in detroit with four thousand almost five thousand dollars cash money no family no gun no nothing just me and god i was fearful so i get into I get into the, I, and I remember my grandma always telling me, my mom always told me, if you if you scared to do it, you shouldn't be doing it. But I thought this was an opportunity. So then that's when, when I had got there, the man was just standing at the lobby and stuff. And he was like, hey, get in the car. I had gotten a Camaro, nice ass 2019 Dodge Camaro. He was like, it was his assistant in the car. He was like, yo, congratulations, queen. You know, you did it. You, this man called me a queen. That congratulating me. Are you ready for what's to come? You work hard. You deserved it and stuff. And we just took a little ride. You know, he said, you don't got to be scared. I'm good people. You cool. Just, you know, reassuring me that things were okay, even though things was not okay. So, guys, we drove in front of the Greyhound station. I did not know this was a Greyhound station before. This is my first time in Detroit, Michigan. It's 4 o'clock in the morning, dark as hell. I didn't know this was a Greyhound station. He was like, okay, hand over the money. I need to count up, make sure everything is the same amount that you said that you had. He count up the money. It's dark as hell. It's a bunch of buses. He was like, there go the um, tour bus. That's little baby tour bus. They in the studio right now waiting on you. Gunning them waiting on you. They, you know, come and record. I had handed him the money. He counted that shit up. Everything was right. He handed me back $45. He was like, here, take this. You're going to need this for food and stuff. And I'm like, okay, I, I am going to need that for food. But nigga, aren't you the label? Like, you supposed to be paying for that shit. Like, what you mean $45? Like, that ain't going to last me to go eat. And we going to Cali the next day. So what the fuck you mean? Like, California, I know $45. I've never been to California, but I know for a fact $45 is not going to last me and take me very long. He counted up the money. He was like, all right, now they're going to wait wait out there. He took the money from me. He was like, wait out there. They're going to come to get you. Man, I got out that car. Biggest mistake of my life. I got out that car, y'all. I kid you not, I was in front of a Greyhound station. I'm thinking that that's their tour bus. That was a fucking Greyhound station, y'all. Excuse my French, but it's just, it was a Greyhound station. So I'm standing in front of the Greyhound station. He was like, now nah, they gonna come get you. He shut his door. I shut his door and stuff. And I was just sitting out waiting. I walked back to his car. I'm like, okay, like, he was still sitting there. So I had went back to his car. The car was locked. Something said tie back up. Something said tie back up. I backed up. He sped off so fast. Like, he sped off so fast. Something said look at the tag number. But it was just, I didn't do that. Like, I, it was just, everything was happening so fast. So I'm sitting there waiting, waiting, waiting. I'm realizing like, okay, this is a fucking Greyhound station. These are Greyhound buses. These are not tour buses. I'm just like, damn, something say you lost it. Something said it was a scam. Got robbed at gunpoint because the dude had a big gun on his hip. I forgot, I left that part out. Dude had a big gun on his hip when I got in the car, big gun. I'm in Detroit with no gun. I'm in Detroit by myself, you know, by myself. So I'm just sitting there. I'm like, damn, I didn't got jacked. 
I didn't got Jack. I'm sitting not the Greyhound bus. I didn't got Jack. So I called my mom. I was like, mom was a scam. She was like, I just had a dream. I just had a dream that you got robbed. God just had showed her that it was not meant to be. But he showed her after the like after the situation. She had that dream. And um, I got off the phone with her. I called my sister. I was like, Steph, this they robbed me. They scammed me. She was crying like, what happened? Like trying to call the people. The people didn't change their number so quick. So I'm sitting out there. I tried to go inside the Greyhound station, but the Greyhound station was closed. You know, it was four o'clock in the morning. They didn't open back up to eight. So I had to stand out there four hours by myself. Came to Detroit. I flew first class in Delta. First time in first class with a bunch of Caucasian rich motherfuckers. Excuse my French. So it was just a humbling experience. And then fast forward, I didn't got robbed. I have to sit in front of a Greyhound station with a bunch of crackheads for four hours until they open up the door. This white man came up to me. He said, you might want, I had an Apple, I had my Apple watch on, my AirPods in, Balenciagas, I'm fitted. He said, you might want to take them AirPods out, put that watch up, because you in Detroit, Michigan. Mind you, this is my first time in Detroit by myself. Oh, this is my first time in Detroit by myself. Shit crazy. Shit crazy. So I'm sitting out there crying. I'm sitting out there hurt. Like, y'all got to understand, I just got jacked. For all that money for my first car, I just got jacked by myself in Detroit, Michigan, with nobody. You don't know what was going through my head. I wanted to end it, end that shit right there. Like, then I had a friend, my close friend, I had told her what happened. She was like, Tayana, try to go in the building, try to go in the building. What if they come back, spin the block and kill you? Like, she was just scared, nervous, because what if they did spin the block and, and come back for me because they were scared that I was going to go tell on them or go whatever, go snitch and shit. What if they was going to come back and, and kill me? And I'm sitting outside the Greyhound station and I can't go in. You know what I'm saying? So y'all got to think about that. It was a very, very, very scary feeling. It was a very scary feeling. And this happened to me last year this time. So I'm I'm in the Greyhound station sobbing, just sobbing. It was this white lady, came, a Caucasian lady came up to me. She was like, here, I felt on my heart to give you this. She gave me $30. She said, give you, get you some food, you know, get you some food. They only gave me $45. A ticket back home was like 90 something dollars. So I still had to call back home to get the ticket. So it was just a really messed up feeling. They was trying to get me a, a flight back home, but it was four o'clock in the morning. How was I gonna get from A to B? So I had to catch a bus back home and she just kept my, I told you, I told you. And I really didn't want to hear that because it's like, okay, you told me I didn't listen. And now I got to deal with the consequences by myself. So it's just a very traumatized and dramatic feeling. Like, man, I've been grinding for this long. I'm finally making it. Like, you don't understand. And I, I wasn't going to sign a 360 deal. I just need a management deal, a distribution deal, something like that. But not no 360. I would not be a slave to no one. It was just very traumatizing and, and, and it took me four days to get back on the bus to Palm Beach. It took me four days to get back on the bus, man. I'm, I rode to Detroit on first class. Coming back, I'm on a Greyhound bus with a bunch of crackheads. It was a humbling experience, but before y'all, you know, y'all can say what y'all want to say in the comments. You, you on your way to work make it $44 a day and somebody call you like your life finna change you gonna take a risk too you know so I just wanted to share with you guys my story I hope that this motivated all the independent artists to not go for no record deal none of that you know get it out the mud salute the young and May. she got it out the mud like really really got it out the mud Gates got it out the mud people that I look up to in this music industry they got it out the mud so I should have just been smarter and it was definitely a lesson learned and I was just naive to the situation because I've been grinding for so long. I literally come from nothing. I literally sit here and drop music, drop music, drop music. Nobody give a fuck. Nobody listening. So I thought it was my time. And and it's, it, I hate that that had to happen to me. But to all my non-believers out there that don't believe in God, I hope this video changed your whole mindset, your circumstances in life. And I just hope blessings and peace be upon each and every one of you. Thank you guys for watching. I just wanted to share with you guys a traumatizing dramatic experience that i went through robbed at gunpoint in detroit michigan first time in detroit michigan 
You know, I mention this in a lot of my songs, a lot of songs that I'm dropping. I, I, I mention this because it's, it's, it's a traumatizing experience that I had to go through. So if I could have been floating in the Michigan River, but the fact that I'm sitting here today sharing with you guys the greatness of God, I just want to thank you guys for tuning in. Happy June 19th to all my black kings and queens out there. You know, black lives do matter. So I just want to say thank you guys for tuning in. You guys have a blessed day.